If you've been feeling a little tingle in your automotive dingle lately, it's because the world's first fully electric, off-road proven pickup truck with surprise, surprise drift mode is delivering to customers in the real world as we speak. And I'm not talking about Tesla and that Atari ass pickup, I'm talking about a little company called Rivian. The hype around this company is crazy. How is an EV startup worth more than the Ford company? Who are these guys? Are they really gonna disrupt the EV game or will they fade into obscurity like so many other claimed Tesla killers in the past? Let's get you up to speed on Rivian. Thank you to Dr. Squatch for sponsoring today's video. I used to be ignorant of all natural hygiene, but now everything makes sense. I tossed out that big box two-in-one shampoo and conditioner and started respecting my roots with the high performance hygiene of Dr. Squatch. <sighs> Looks like someone needs a lathering lesson. Say goodbye to that big box. Way ahead of you all natural, Jerry. I've been nourishing my scalp with Dr. Squatch's all natural hair products for weeks. Mmm, pine tar. Glad to see you're learning from our adventures. Want to take an even closer look? Closer look, wait, I, I didn't teach you how to. <sighs> Looks like someone's all natural powers are growing. All thanks to you, all natural Jerry. What do you think of my follicle forest? <sighs> Smells outdoorsy and looks so healthy. Come on, I'll show you around. Unlike those harsh big box shampoos that strip the natural oils from your head, Dr. Squatch's shampoo naturally hydrates and soothes your scalp with the finest ingredients nature has to offer. Mm, talk about smooth, handsome hair. Someone's been using Dr. Squatch's conditioner too. Mm -hmm. That's the power of their pine tar conditioner. It's packed with avocado oil, shea butter, and pine tar to scrub, cleanse, and condition your happy scalp. <sighs> So proud of you, Nolan. Feels like just months ago, you were putting all kinds of harsh chemicals into your body, and now look at you, standing on your own head, looking and smelling your best. Take us home before I shed some all natural tears of happiness. All right. Bye. Make your loved ones cry for joy this holiday season by giving the gift of high performance hygiene with these awesome Squatch Miss bundles. I'm talking soap, deodorant, hair care, even a build your own bundle. Get festive freshness today by going to DrSquatch.com or clicking the link below. Plus, new customers can save 20% when they use code DSCDONUT at checkout. Looks like there's only one thing left to do, Nolan. <laughs> Whoa. Or should I say, all natural, Nolan? Did we just become best friends? Yup, Dr. Squatch. Rivian aims to change the truck and SUV game the same way that Tesla rocked luxury sedans. And let's be honest, that's not gonna be easy. Truck folks are one of the hardest EV markets to crack, but Rivian seems to have a maybe genius plan to actually make it happen. Now we'll get into that later and we'll dig into where and who this company came from. But right now, let's take a look at what they're bringing to the EV table. It's a crew cab pickup with more than 800 buff lightning horses, 900 beefy boy pound feet of twerks, and the ability to hit 60 miles per hour in three seconds on dirt, like a freaking Group B car. Rivian didn't politely place the R1T on the EV table. They overturned the table, splattered spaghetti, sparkling apple juice, and a bunch of protons and electrons all over the wall. All that power and speed, it's great. But how far can I drive this Wally looking ass thing on a single charge? How about 300 miles per charge standard and 400 for an extra $10,000? 400 miles per charge, and it'll cost you $100 a mile less than the operating cost of your freaking STI. Now speaking of all wheel drive, it's standard on the R1T. Each 21 inch wheel is powered by its own electric motor. This allows for what I like to call the lawnmower turn. The left and right wheels rotate in opposite directions, twisting the truck on its axles like one of those freaking lawnmowers with yokes instead of a steering wheel. That's a pretty nifty trick. But how does this truck handle the rough and tumble? Well, check out this video of a stock R1T tackling Moab's infamous Hell's Gate earlier this year. I mean, yeah, sure, a Kia Sedona did it, but I mean, it's still cool. So the R1T and uh, Rivian's SUV that's gonna come out later, the R1S, are built on a skateboard architecture where the heavy batteries are mounted under the passenger compartment. Now this gives these beasts 
a low center of gravity. They can carve corners way better than your average truck or SUV, which is probably why it has drift mode. Drift mode. I'm gonna be honest, guys, I think drift mode's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's like the lamest old white guy version of like PR appealing to young people. We have a professional drifter on our staff. You think he gives one single crap about drift mode on this truck? No, no. Because he lives drift mode. He is drift mode. And this drift mode is like lame. One other major advantage of a skateboard chassis is the versatility that it offers. Now, when your cars all use the same effective floor pan or drivetrain, you can drop whatever kind of bodies on it that you want. We saw this at SEMA this year. Ford released an EV crate motor. Roadster Shop made a chassis for it. And I'm really excited to see a bunch of new, I mean, old electric cars. Really, the sky is the limit. That's one of the, the biggest assets to Rivian. They can make whatever they want. They can expand their vehicular portfolio without breaking the bank. It's like me at an orgy. Just throw another body on it. <laughs> now, the Rivian R1T starts at just under $70,000. All right, compare that to the $40,000 base price of Ford's upcoming EV F-150, the Lightning. It's big Benjis, you know what I mean? But the trucks are aimed at different markets, all right? Rivian's crosshairs fall on affluent Patagucci sporting granolas in Tahoe, and that's honestly a really smart move. Ford's more interested in feeling out how their primary blue collar F-150 base will accept an EV truck. With the tagline electric adventure vehicles and options like an integrated camp kitchen with a working stove and a three person rooftop tent, it seems like Rivian have carefully defined their lane and they're sticking to it. This is the maybe genius plan I was talking about earlier. And you know what? Since you and I have such an open and honest, you know, relationship, I feel like I can give it to you straight. This truck will meet 90% of the truck buying public's needs. Most truck owners aren't installing a front hitch for a snowplow. They aren't hauling tons of gravel once a week. They're going to the store. All right, they're going camping. And the R1T, it can go to the store, dude. It can go camping. It can also tow up to 11,000 pounds. Now, where did this company come from? And what planet is its CEO obsessed with conquering? 38 year old Rivian CEO, RJ Skirringe, doesn't give a f about Mars or even your anus. He cares about our, he might care about your anus. He cares about our cozy little home planet, Earth. RJ grew up near Melbourne, Florida, two hours east of Tampa, the death metal capital of the world. As a kid, when he wasn't getting straight A's tinkering on projects with his engineer father or helping rebuild old Porsches in his neighbor's restoration shop, he was exploring the forests and the swamps of his extended backyard. The name Rivian actually comes from the Indian River Lagoon where RJ paddled around in his rowboat as a kid. Swamp kid? See? So naturally, young RJ developed a deep appreciation for nature and all that wrenching on classic Porsches made him into a serious car enthusiast. But teenage RJ was deeply concerned about climate change, but he also wanted to go fast. And at 18 years old, he decided that one day he would start his own car company that would align his values. And he decided the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, AKA MI frickin' T, was a good place to learn how to do it. Now, during his time at MIT's famed Sloan Automotive Laboratory, RJ nerded out on engineering details like exhaust gas recirculation and variable valve timing stuff that helps internal combustion engines reduce environmental impact. But the more he learned about internal combustion, the more problems he found. Now, electric cars, though not a perfect solution, seemed like a big step in the right direction. So he took a big step himself and founded Mainstream Motors in 2009. Now, as with any startup, the first few years were rough. They didn't even have a freaking ping pong table. They didn't even have a freaking slide. They didn't even have IPAs on tap. They didn't even have any cold brews. So we're gonna skip ahead a few years to the early 2010s when the lightning bolt that was Tesla's Model S struck gold, finally making EVs a viable option as real, practical cars, and all of a sudden, major car companies around the globe 
were finally taking EVs seriously. They were scrambling to catch up to Tesla and they pretty much still are. RJ and his gang of 15 or so dedicated employees realized that if they were gonna have any chance against these behemoths, they'd have to find a niche to focus on. From 2010 to 2014, RJ and crew built concept cars of any genre that wasn't yet electrified. They tried a sports car, they tried a supercar, they made a freaking dune buggy truck thing, but they didn't have the resources to bring any of these into production. All that failure sucked but it ultimately birthed the idea that changed everything. Now with nothing working out his way, RJ did what we all do when nothing's working out our way. We question every little thing about ourselves. Is it me? What is wrong with me? Why don't I have any friends outside of work? I don't know. From this dark night of the soul, this trip through the jaws of a spiritual Chipmax 44 industrial wood chipper, our man found his answer. Who was RJ? He was a mountain biker, a camper, a runner of rivers, an explorer of swamps, a climber of mountains. He was a swamp kid. He was an outdoor enthusiast. Why not build an EV for people like him? That wasn't on the market yet. And thus, Rivian was born. They were able to secure a bunch of support and in 2017, Rivian bought a former Mitsubishi manufacturing plant in Normal, Illinois for a cool 16 million bones. Cool. Buying a near production ready facility instead of starting from scratch is a brilliant move and RJ didn't make it up. It's the same thing that Elon Musk did when he bought a plant in California. Rivian hit the ground running and within a year working R1T and R1S prototypes were complete. Soon after, they were unveiled at the LA Auto Show and as of this moment in which I'm talking to a camera from behind my cool new desk, Rivian has delivered more than 150 R1Ts to customers around the country. Rivian plans to deliver more than 1,000 cars to customers by the end of this year, 2021. The dream is becoming a reality. Okay, cool, but even with a singular granola focus, how long can Rivian compete with the big boys like Ford? Have you ever heard the phrase, if you can't beat them, join them? Ford invested $800 million in Rivian in 2019. Seems weird for an upstart car manufacturer to get a lifeline from a big boy car company, right? I mean, the big three are notorious for killing smaller companies. Well, Ford's not dumb. And when someone comes around toting tech that they know they need to master with a quickness, it's much easier for them to toss money their way in the name of collaboration than it is to try and develop competition. And while that Ford cash certainly didn't suck, Rivian's biggest whale swam along in the form of everyone's second favorite self-obsessed space billionaire, Jeff Bezos. His middle name is Preston. Amazon ordered 100,000 Rivian delivery vans in 2019 to help achieve Bezos' 2040 goal of net zero carbon emissions across operations. Now this massive fleet order was a condition of Amazon's investment in the company and it became pretty much priority number one for Rivian. Just over a year after the announcement, prototypes of the Amazon van rolled out in 16 US cities. But you gotta ask, how much will Rivian's electric delivery vans really trim Amazon's carbon emissions? And let's get into it. Are Rivian EVs really that much better for the environment? Now, obviously, the idea of everybody driving around in fast, cool EVs that don't further pollute our already totally planet um, is great but the realities of the EV production operation, the disposal cycle, they don't line up with this vision yet. Case in point, in October 2021, an investment group pressed Rivian to address the potential human rights abuses and environmental harms associated with the battery life cycle. As Nolan has covered in an episode of Wheelhouse last year, the stuff we make EV batteries out of right now, primarily lithium and cobalt, is nasty. The mining process is nasty. The production process is nasty. And handling these batteries at the end of their life cycle is nasty. There's also serious human rights violations alleged at some of these mines, like subhuman working conditions and freaking child labor. Not cool. I'm gonna go on record right now and say, unless you're a cute kid on a sitcom in a movie, child labor is not cool. Big Daddy, cool. Disney Channel, cool. They, they get, get to, to be, be famous. famous. Put a little kid in a mine, not cool. 
Rivian responded to the investment group's human rights and environmental questions a month later by promising to release a full impact report in 2023, citing their plan to be climate neutral by 2032 and noting their battery suppliers' commitment not to use the environmentally sketchy deep seed mining process. This is better than Tesla on at least one point. Elon's EV company has yet to announce a climate neutral target date. Uh, to learn more about how green EVs really are, check out uh, an episode of Wheelhouse. I'll put the link in the description. So I gotta say, I think the Rivian R1T is cool. The reviews I'm reading for this thing are very positive. Even better than those for the Chipmax 484 industrial wood chipper. But I really can't be sure about this thing until Rivian sends us one to test ourselves. Maybe a MOA. Regardless of everything, I see in Rivian the makings for an exciting new chapter in the EV game. Will it topple Tesla's stronghold on the market? Probably not. Uh, only time will tell. But with Amazon and Ford in their corner, I think it's a safe bet Rivian won't end up in the Tesla killer graveyard. Jeff Bezos hates Elon Musk so much, he sued NASA about going to the moon. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and everything else on Donut Media. To make sure you don't miss anything, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps us out. Again, I really think you should watch that episode of Wheelhouse. Uh, I'll put it right here. Let me know what you think about uh, EVs in general. Uh, are we gonna fight wars over lithium in the future? I'm gonna go ahead and say probably. We got new merch. Go to DonutMedia.com. Uh, get on the mailing list so you don't miss anything. We have a points program now. You get points for your birthday, you get points for signing up. Then you get discounts on donut stuff. I love you.